Good evening. This is Todd Siegel with the Psychic Zone. Hey, I turned up my volume on here, so hopefully this is coming in loud and clear to you all because I was told it sounds so quiet. Anyway, so I'm here, and um, so I was really thinking about some topics uh, to talk about today, but I also asked my Facebook page what they would like to talk about, and I do have quite a quite a few uh, inputs here. Now let's talk about <clears throat> psychic uh, work, how psychics work, because a lot of people really don't know. I get a lot of new people to me. It doesn't matter if you're a skeptic or not, but I think it's really important people know how a psychic works especially on a major crime. Um, and, of course, some of you have listed some of the, uh, you know, top crimes in the, in the media that are going on right now. And, of course, I did some uh, videos and podcasts on the tragedy in Idaho a year ago. And, you know... By the way, if you hear scratching in the background, that is my cat. <laughs> he's just giving me his attention. He's, yeah, he's like, meow. Yeah, hey, I'm scratching the scratch pad. Anyway, but a lot of people think we're magicians. They think we know everything. They think that we can take a case that's on the media and just map it out, you know. That is absolutely far from the truth, Okay. We do need information in order to give more information. So whether it's evidence, if it's a, a bloody shirt or, you know, a murder weapon, psychic will need some kind of information in order to uh, give uh, the authorities the clues or the evidence. So when you talk about certain subjects, even going back to the Idaho tragedy, um, I would really have to work with law enforcement or detectives on that case to really give you more hardcore evidence about it. And I can give sort of an outline of what I think happened and people involved in this and that, but to be really accurate about it, I would have to see anything. I mean, it, it, would, it, it could be... Um, it, it could be a picture of somebody, or it could be a recording of somebody on the phone. It could be a video from a gas station, that kind of thing. Or even seeing just a car. So I actually need a lot of that stuff in order to move forward with an investigation. And so a lot of people have listed some, you know, some of these crimes that are in the media right now, and I probably won't talk about those tonight. I think what's on everybody's mind are <sighs> recent things going on in the media politically and, and uh, you know, this whole witch trial going on with, um, you know, our previous president and... I'm actually not going to get too involved in that stuff tonight because I want to talk about, and it's kind of how I'm going to title this podcast, but I'm going to be talking about evil in general and, you know, how we can prove there is evil out there. I mean, anyway. Also, then I want to talk about psychic abilities and how I perceive things. Because it's not exactly how it's been shown on TV or in Hollywood. It, it It's a lot different. Sure, there have been some documentaries and series and that give a pretty good perspective. I did a... Um, I did a reading recently for somebody who went through uh, incredible suffering 
a um, couple of years ago through the the COVID and everything like that, and um, was hospitalized for a long time. Who who had a near death experience, and it kind of changed this person in a in a big way. And as they often do. Now, sometimes it can make people too sensitive, and it can make their psychic abilities so elevated that they cannot sleep, they, ca they cannot function, uh, they have to go on anti-anxiety drugs. Um, so having a, a psychic experience, or an awakening, so, so to speak, can be quite traumatic. And that was pretty traumatic for me back in my 30s. Um, I never had an interest in psychics or abilities or anything like that. But as I saw spirits and as I was, you know, seeing right through people's futures, it it really disturbed me. And people with PTSD can have these kind of uh, visualizations or events, okay? And but most psychic work is not the way people think. We don't have a crystal ball that can see everything. If you talk about a certain job or something, I may see some general stuff about it, but I might not be tuned in. On the other hand, something happens at work or involves somebody else, I might be really tuned in. And if you asked me what is the hardest part about my job. The hardest part about my job is is basically explaining to people what psychic abilities really are like, because they're not exactly what you think. And they can be uh, as sharp as a razor, and they can also uh, not be there for certain things. And a good psychic usually is pretty honest about what he or she can see and what he or she doesn't see. And on a detective case, I could sum up the whole thing very quickly, or it could take me uh, quite a while until I examine some of the other evidence, or find an angle into the case through certain people or talking to certain people, okay? So it's just the way it is. That goes with mediumship too. I mean, there's literally millions of people who want to communicate with a certain loved one on the other side. But I tell people that person might not come through. I don't know why. They may not just be there, okay? It's not a bad thing. You know, I've lost loved ones, and I've lost pets, and some of them have come through to me pretty, uh, you know, in a sharp way, and then some of them, nothing, nothing at all. And um, most mediums out there will tell you it's, it's like that. We don't have all the answers. We see what we see. Oftentimes, there will be somebody around you that may not even be relevant to you. That happens a lot with... I've had quite a few readings with people who've had their uh, parents in nursing homes, you know. And a lot of them will see people, and they'll even talk about people, and then I'll give a reading to the, the family... And they'll be like, well, that's really strange, you know? My father was talking about this girl that was coming to visit him, you know? So we, we have proof there, you know? I'll say something, then all of a sudden it comes true through that certain person. And spirits are attracted to people who are in transition, who are close to death. And... Um, I've been actually dealing with this. You know, a lot of people said, oh, where have you been? You've been really quiet. Well, besides doing readings, which I'm doing every day, um, 
somebody very, very dear to me has um, been taken ill this year and uh, went through a major surgery. So it's been a hard year, hard year um, going through a health crisis, going through recovery, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, it's hard when your parents and family get older. And that's it. It is very, very hard. So I've been going through that lately. And um, also, I'm not a negative person. In fact, um, it's kind of like uh, my abilities have me sort of seeing in the middle of things, you know. I'm not looking at one thing as overjoyed or depressed. I'm, I'm just looking right in the middle. But this last year and 2023 were actually a very, very uh, extremely important time in my life. Um, incredible in, in certain ways. And I'm eternally grateful what has transpired in the, in the last year uh, for me. So whatever I talk about tonight on this program, I don't want to come across as completely negative or a negative person because uh, actually life has been uh, extremely good to me. I, I've... Um, it's been an incredible year. And you know, when we have incredible years, then also the hard times uh, come about. And, it, it, you know, that's the way of the world. Um, the yin and yang, you know, the light and dark interacting with each other. And one comes into effect, another comes about, you know, the front and back side come about. That is what this year has been about. and um, But it's very hard to see your parents aging extremely hard, and it's one of those times when, um, you know, even though I can see things, I try to have faith. I try to keep positive. I try to see the good. Um, or pray for some miracles, because miracles can always happen. It's very, very important to say not all things are written. We can change our destiny, or we can change the road that we're on to our destiny. So those, you know, if you're having a tough year, okay, if, if you're having a tough year financially, like I, I would say most of the population is having right now, um, it doesn't mean that your destiny is going to be terrible. It just means that we might need to take a different trail or a different route to where we're going. Most of the time we think too small, you know? Most of the time we limit ourselves. And... Um, and that's that's a it's a hard thing to change for certain people, you know. But anyway, I was going to talk about a little bit about the dark side because people always ask me when I'm doing readings, you know, for people on the other side, is there anything dark over there? Is there is there bad? Is there bad in the world? Yes, there is. Is it an energy? Is it uh, an entity? You know? Everybody's got an opinion on it. I see it all as energy. Okay? And um, today, of course... Uh, Everybody wants to know what's happening with the uh, U.S. election and all of that. And I basically said um, 
this year, I was very worried, not so much about the election, but I was very worried about the state of the world. I saw wars going on. I talked about Iran as, uh, you know, a lot of controversy going on there, which actually happened. Um, yes, I see the Middle East. I see August, September as could be a very fiery month out in the Middle East. Okay, just to warn you, that's what I see. If it doesn't happen, great. Okay, could have been some intervention comes in. But that's what I see. I see a very hard year. I also see this as a year of, of exploding egos. And you know, I... Yeah, I ride a motorcycle most of the time. I'm out in the road, and I'll tell you something. Boy, there's a lot of egos out there. A lot of egos. And those egos hurt people um, with the, the way they disobey the rules and think they can make their own rules. And, you know, this is not a new thing. This has been going on forever in the world, but it seems like it's more emphasized now. And we've got some real problems at home here. And remember, if I, I speak politically, I'm really in the middle. In fact, I, I don't even watch the news most of the time. On a rare occasion, I'll, I'll look at a highlight. But here's the thing about psychic abilities. When I see somebody in the newspaper, or if I see somebody on TV, or see these politicians talking, I can take each one of them, I can see right through them. And it, it, it's like the biggest organized crime ring I've ever seen in my life. I kid you not. So it's actually really hard for me to look at the news, because I see these people, and I see, oh my God, I see what they've done. I see what they're capable of doing. That scares the poop out of me. It really does. But I think you have to look at the bigger picture too. It's kind of the way I look at things when I'm going to the scene of a crime, you know, or if I'm even talking about somebody's boyfriend <laughs> in a reading. I'm looking at the bigger picture. You know, if fragments are coming in, the picture's not so clear. I'm, I want to go to the bigger picture. I want to see what that person's going to do in two years, okay? It's the same with, with uh, when we're talking about politics and we're talking about 2024 and the election year. Um, there's been a shadow of evil <clears throat> basically hovering over this country uh, since its founding, actually if you want to really, really be detailed about this. And, you know, with good, there's always, you know, bad alongside of it. And when I look at this country, and I, and I focus on different countries, you know, it's funny, like you'll see certain countries are in the news for about 10 years. You know, there's all these things going on. It almost seems like, you know, 10, 12-year cycles happen. And if you ask my perspective of America and what I see going on in the U.S., we've been in this cycle for quite a while. I would say about mm, 42 to 44 years, we've been in a really hard cycle. And then if I jump through, if dates 2015 for some reason feels very uh, negative to me. And for over 10 years, 2024 looks like Arm has looked like Armageddon years ago to me. So I'm just giving you a heads up. I saw 2024 as a... I, I was so scared of this year so many years ago, and I didn't know why. I just didn't know why. 
But the way I'm seeing things right now, um, well, it's kind of like this. It, it's sort of like what we see on the surface is not what is down below, and what is down below is even worse than on the surface. And, you know, um, the only difference between the dictators in this country and the dictators in other countries is that ours are behind closed doors while the others in other countries are out, you know, in the street having rallies and having parties. So we have a lot of evil here. And we're locked in this cycle and I, I'm afraid to say that if I feel like we may not see any light at the end of the tunnel till about 2029. So, and I hear it every day. I, I talk to clients and the economy is, is ripping them apart. You know, there there's... But the ego is something that just, I, I, I just cannot believe my eyes. I mean, there's people who are swimming in debt just so they can show the world that we look prosperous. We look, you know, like we're keeping up with the times, but these people are swimming in some terrible debt. So do I see another ripple? Do I see an, uh, another just really bad uh, recession type time or stock market drop that just jolts everybody? If you asked about a stock market jolt, I think I see it next year possibly. I'm also getting a number seven, which means the month of July. Okay. I don't think this year, I mean, it could be possible it's July of this year, but I think it's next year. Next year is a uh, turbulent financial year, turbulent, okay? And, um, but anyway, as far as the... Uh, the news, as is, is, is far as the election goes, well, like I told you, I didn't see an election happening, which tells me that either it doesn't take place or the same person is reelected in the office. Okay? And, um, yeah, that hasn't changed. I thought something would change, and... And I, I think the idiots out there who are, who are causing mayhem are wasting valuable time in this country. You know, we have needy and poor. We've got sick. We have so many issues that are important, but we have a bunch of knuckleheads that are, are making a stupid show, you know, and I'm not even going to mention names, but you get my drift. What is going on right now is outrageous. It is absolutely outrageous and unnecessary. You know, there's people out there who can't get medical prescriptions because they cannot pay for them. <clears throat> there's people living in their cars because they cannot pay rent. And they're working two to three jobs and they still can't make rent. You know, I've had a lucky life, I, I've, and, and I'll admit, but I worked very hard. I was a carpenter, and I was a licensed contractor, and I worked extremely hard. Anybody out there who is uh, one of those trades, hats off to you, but you know it's a very, very hard thing. And we always had a saying among the other carpenters I worked with, you know. If we worked for somebody who was wealthy, well, we knew why they were wealthy, because they didn't want to spend anything. <laughs> it's the truth. 
the people who were so sweet to us were the people who had nothing. Oh, they'd invite us in for meals and they'd give us extra money. They didn't have anything. And we're seeing a lot of that in this world right now. A lot of greed, you know, a lot of self-absorbed people. And um, it seems to be getting worse. Definitely when I'm out in the road in my motorcycle, I can see it. I mean, it should be common sense, you know, to put your phone down when you're in the car. I, I can't tell you, it, every time I go out on the road, there's somebody who's got that phone sitting in front of their face. I don't know why they do that. There is a stand that goes in the car that actually can hold your phone, just so you know. They're pretty cheap if you go to the auto parts store. But there's these people who have to drive one hand on the wheel, and they have to hold this phone in front of them while they're driving. They can't see anything, and I'm sitting there on my motorcycle and they're making me dizzy. They're going from side to side. Not only that, they've all blackened their windows now so I can't see through the view of their windows anymore. That's a problem. Problem for a motorcycle rider. That's made things very hard because we have to see visibly through a car window. And uh, that that is just... Um, with these darkened windows, it's, um, it's very difficult. But it, it's just the, you know, it, it, it's this selfishness that's going on out there among people who just think they're, you know, God's gift to humanity. And I just see this attitude on the road all the time all the time. And um, I actually feel safer on my motorcycle than I do in my truck because I can get out of the way much quicker. I can actually stop quicker too because, you know, truck has a lot more weight to it, so you can't stop as quick. But anyway, let's talk about the world, though, and what I see coming in 2024. I really see a lot of... Um, August looks just on fire to me. August looks like there's going to be something happening overseas. And then I also see protests in this country, and I see those August and September. Um, it, it just, it, it's going to be a, a very active year, um, not in a good way. Okay. Financially, I don't see things getting better at all. I actually see a dip in the housing market coming September. So if selling homes and it's your thing, get ready for um, not such a good fall. And also, I was talking about evil, and I was talking about how that works in the world, but I also see that that different countries have kind of like a, a darkness put over them for a certain amount of time, you know? And I feel in the U.S., I said that I don't see anything really turning till about 2029. So we've been caught in this this kind of a, a fog for a long time and it's gotten progressively worse. And the people in power that I told you I can just see right through, I just can't, I can't even look at the news. I honestly cannot even look at the news. That's how bad it is. I mean, these people just, I can see what they've done. Going back to 2019, you know, when the pandemic started. I could see right through that too. It scared the crap out of me. I saw a lot of people who I felt were responsible for it. Obviously, I can't say names because, well, I'm live on the air right now. 
Were they people overseas? No, they were right here. That's what scares me even more. Tons and tons of people suffered through all that. If they're capable of that kind of thing, think about what they could do in the future. Do I see another pandemic coming? Good possibility around October, November of this year, yes. Okay. So, how do you go on with your life with all this stuff looming? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Um, sometimes awareness is, is not enough to cope, you know? And unfortunately, we've kind of lost um, our quest for freedom. We've taken advantage of it too much. And um, so I, I don't, I, I do see certain groups and I see a lot of discontent in this country happening, um, especially around August, September. But we've been in a cloud and I, I think it's almost like it, it's a magnetic magnetic earth type thing or energy going on in this country. Okay, but we, we have certain people in the world with a, an enormous power, enormous wealth. And it's not even about money. It's about a very twisted vision of where they want to see the world go. And it, it's, it's frightening. It is really frightening. You know, if you're a doctor or if you're a nurse out there, I have a lot of respect for you. I mean, you have a very, very hard job. But I also have clients who are doctors and nurses who can see that the system has been so corrupted. The corporate system that, that runs the health organizations, uh, you know, that runs all, all the stuff associated with insurance and drugs and, you know, supplies and all those things. Same thing with uh, same thing with education, and um, things have just escalated so bad uh, with these large entities taking over. Also, large entities taking over the financial system. I don't think the USA is actually owned by us anymore. I really don't. And that goes for the world as well. It seems like there's there's key players that meet in secret who are running the whole show. And they have a very, very twisted view, but it's not about money to them. It's about dictating what they think society should be. Did any of you ever see the James Bond movie Moonraker? Because I just saw that on TV the other night. Do you remember that one? And, and you remember the man who built the space shuttle in the movie and he... Um, well, he acted innocent like his space shuttles were being stolen, you know, but really what he was doing was making a space station out there and then he wanted to poison planet Earth so he could, uh, you know, basically reproduce a whole new generation of a pure race of people in space and bring them back down to Earth when it, when it was safe to bring them down a man of an enormous wealth. I mean, that movie just basically sets the stage for what's going on now. Banks and financial companies, they're run by bigger entities. And that's scary. I mean, you can't you can't watch a news network and and um 
think that they are just their news network. They're owned by somebody else. They're owned by big corporate people. And a lot of them are just involved in politics, you know? Nothing is honest anymore. It's, it's all part of this, this big world domination, a big agenda. And you can believe whatever you want, but our, our country is run by evil right now. It is run by evil. But we're not the only ones. It's happening overseas, too. And um, I'm going to look at some of your questions, too, on Facebook that some people asked. Um, well, somebody asked about the presiden presidential election, wars in Ukraine and Israel, China. I'm not seeing much about China, but I can say that Israel will be the hot spot. Also, Iran. Okay. I think the Ukraine situation won't be as escalated right now, but nobody, um, a lot of people don't know the truth about that either. I'll leave it at that. Um, we are, let's see, looking at another question. Okay, we have a Deborah asking about um, direct psychic impressions instead of them willy-nilly popping up all random as they please. Um, I think she's asking about an order of how psychic phenomena comes to me and I can give examples of that, you know, uh, somebody's, you know, let's say somebody's dog is missing. So I ask for basic information if they have a picture of the dog. I also uh, want to know if there were some sightings. I will first start at the exact address of where the dog was lost. Okay, um, when I get the basic information, all of a sudden I'm seeing something. Uh, so they do pop up in certain ways. Okay, if I get an area, okay, then what I do is I'll focus on that area and I start to see apartments or I start to see a walking path or I might see a river and then I focus on that. So if you're talking about do psychic impressions just pop up randomly and you just don't know where to put them, well, they can, but most of the time when I'm working, there is an order to it. And what I have to do is I have to focus on that order and elaborate on it and then come up with certain details that somebody can recognize when they go to that location. So that's a little bit about the way it works. Um, let's see. Um, trying to understand some of these questions. Um, um, one woman asked about what is causing the fish dying off in Florida contamination or something more sinister. I feel it's bacteria natural, actually, some kind of natural occurring bacteria going on. Could be wrong, but... Um, wow, well, here's an interesting question from Saskia. I hope I pronounced your name right. What is the truth about religion? Does it matter in the afterlife? Is there one higher power source controlling this all? Who made us the universe? Heavy questions. No, very good question, actually. There was a woman who, who 
was very important in raising me when I was growing up. She actually worked uh, for my family. And um, she was just very, very religious, you know. And um, one of the kindest people I've, I've ever known in my whole life. She was very, very important to me. She's passed on now, passed on many, many years ago. And when I see somebody of her uh, background and faith, I really do, I do feel it affects the person when they pass on. Because they, even though they are very involved in their faith, there comes a state of mind that they're in about a higher being, higher purpose, that kind of thing. So it's not so important to me, or this is my opinion, about the religion itself as the state of mind that comes from following the faith, you know? And it does affect somebody in the afterlife. Are there people who are kind of stuck? Yes. Yes. Do you have to be a person of religion in order to go through the afterlife in a better way? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Everything's a state of being. Everything's a state of mind. You know? Somebody was also asking about spirit guides and that kind of thing. How do we connect with them, this and that. Um, remember that there are spirits always around us. Who we choose to use as our guides is, is, is up to us, but there are many spirits around us. And I see this when people pass on, you know, uh, I remember this woman that I was talking about earlier who had the near-death experience. Seeing people, seeing other spirits, not, necessar not necessarily family, but when you're half in and half out of this world, when you're unconscious, or going through a surgery or something like that, you can get a really hard glimpse of what it is on the other side, and it's not another side, it's, it's right here, it's this world. We don't go somewhere else, we're right here. It's just kind of like a, uh, you know, like a little window shade, just, you know, in the same room, but you, you can't see through the window shade, you know? It might be uh, an opaque sort of color and you just see the shadow and this. It, it's just like that. The only difference is I think we do have choices of what we want to be on the other side. Now what happens to evil? Evil... From what I see, uh, I don't have all the answers of the other side or death, but I think evil doesn't become anything. And then you're probably asking, well, what about the evil people right now who are destroying this world, who are making all these problems, you know? We're in the physical existence, okay? Things are harder here. Things are manifested in the physical realm. So anybody who's evil here will cause more destruction among those of the living. On the other side, I do not see it. Although there will be some spirit entities that will affect a household or a place. 
who are negative. But, you know, and in most cases, um, they don't go away. It's very hard to get them out of a home, out of a place. Does that mean it turns the good spirits into bad? No, not necessarily. You know, there's been people who passed away and their sons and daughters have been left behind and some of them have become very bad people. You know, what happens to them? What happens to that spirit? Is the spirit watching, saying, oh my God, I can't let this happen? Yeah, a lot of times they do. A lot of times they know they can't change things. But anyway, I should probably talk about what other countries, because somebody was asking about that. Um, you know, of course, the Middle East is one place. Are there any other countries that I feel that could be having some issues this year as well? Not this year, but next year, possibly Indonesia. Okay, that's one place that's coming to me. Something, some kind of news, something dark shadow happens in England this year. So I feel a lot of heaviness around England. Southern England, especially. I do feel possible volcanoes this year in the Pacific that could cause disturbances in weather, and it could actually be cooler than it normally is. So it could alter our weather just a bit. I see a lot of flooding and a lot of rain in the fall in the U.S., especially around the south. So be prepared for that. Let me see what else people are asking me. Well, Netanyahu resigned soon, or what will happen? We're talking about Israel. I don't see anything until next year, possibly, and I don't think it's a resignation. Okay, my thoughts on other dimensions and our existence our existence being multidimensional. Time, time travel, parallel universes, aliens, sleep realm. I was watching a program about uh, time travel the other evening. It was very, very interesting. Um, I think they were showing a picture or something of a very old photo. And they, they had in that very old photo a modern person in that photo. Dressed modern, looking modern. Um, time or our perception of time is very different on the other side. Parallel universe, well, just as I was talking about death, what we don't see here in front of us. What, what are we seeing here? We're, we're looking with our eyes. They focus on light, dark uh, dimensions, okay? But our eyes cannot see the other side or the other universe among us. That's just... So we have a lot of limitations. Animals, on the other hand, can see much easier the other dimension. And um, <laughs> my cat's given his input on that. Um, I had a question, when will med beds be available to the population? I do not know 
what those are. I'm sorry. Um, when we go from 3D to 4D to 5D, um, are we speaking about brassiere sizes, or is this um, something having to do with dimensions? So I'm not sure about your question. Angel numbers. Um, don't know a lot about those. Numbers come to me when I'm working on readings or cases. Let me see. Uh, was the helicopter crash with the Iranian president accident or murder? Murder, I feel. Um, I feel somebody of a militant group or something uh, responsible. I have a very long question about what's the process of people, how, how does pe a person die or what is what are the steps? Um, how does mental illness fit into the spiritual world? Mental, um, <clears throat> well, this, the steps of dying. Um, when I'm around somebody who is, you know, just a, a very close step away from death, I can, I can feel it, I can see it. Okay, I can see it. Um, Actually, somebody wrote in to me who I had a reading with some months ago, and uh, they were, they actually said their mom passed the month that I said she would. Now, I don't always know that, but um, there, there is something that shows me when somebody's going to go. Most of the time it's spirit life around them or spirits are attracted to them. So I see them in this world and in the spirit world. Um, you know, mental health. Uh, usually, well, let's say somebody has dementia or Alzheimer's and when they die, no, I do not see them having that after they, they pass away. Um... Okay, I have some long questions here. What else am I seeing? Um, more cases. S the second half of 2024, uh, Chelsea asked me, well, I was kind of talking about that. Um, I see some more nonsense trials going on around uh, November, December, I think, uh, with public figures. Uh, the one that just happened recently with our previous president is, um, I'm not siding with anybody, but is, is a waste of everybody's time. Okay. Okay, so I've been asked a question about when or when you are doing a reading and a loved one pops in, how do you handle it? You get these people as a... Um, well, sometimes I'll come right out and tell somebody that somebody from the other side is coming through. I won't always know who it is at all. I'll, I'll describe them. And, you know, it's it just, um, I'll see a face, I'll see the person, I'll, I'll see them maybe waving or smiling, or sometimes we'll have, I'll be having a conversation with a client, then all of a sudden a voice sort of steps in saying, no, that's not exactly the truth. And I don't know who it is. So, that can happen quite a bit. Let me see what else I have here. Hold on. Um, love, politics, money, you know the lights. <laughs> well, I was talking a little bit about that. Um, 
This is a good question from Denise. Fear. How it affects our life and keeps us from being happy. All of us deal with fear, especially now. Fear of not having enough money to pay our bills, fear of getting sick, fear of getting old. Yeah. Do I think there's fear after death? I kind of think there is, actually. I don't always feel that when we pass away that all fear goes away. It's kind of like, um, it's. I think fear and our spirituality are tied together. So it, it's sort of like, I don't think we have to take uh, drugs, and I don't think we have to go through ther therapy, although it could be helpful. I don't think, I think we have to add something to our lives that brings peace of mind, that brings our bliss back into focus. I'm dealing with a client who has this, who has extreme fear extreme fear, uh, seeing psychiatrists, seeing therapists. She is uh, dealing with a very heavy plate. And all the, all the therapists want to do is just make a diagnosis. They'll, they'll go across the board um, a multitude of different diagnoses, which actually don't help the person. And this client one day said, you know, she went on this, this local vacation. She was out bodyboarding out in the ocean. She said that she felt all her fear just dissipate when she was out there going down these waves and bodyboarding. And I said, why don't you do that all the time? She says, well, I can't afford to. Well... That kind of bliss, that kind of energy helped, you know? So if you have a lot of fear, it's not so much that you have to cope with that fear or you have to treat that fear. I think it's that you have to add something else to your life to basically just wipe away that fear or override it, you know? You know, it's kind of like if you get really bad news about something health-wise and you put all your focus on that. I've seen the most success with people turning things around who basically focused on something else. And didn't put all their focus in that one on that one health matter. And I've seen it help people. Why are so many missing people never found? Well, I mean, it really depends on the country because I work in different countries doing missing people cases. But oftentimes it's with the authorities. They have other things to do. When somebody is of an adult age, they don't really take it as seriously as maybe a child. Although if it's a famous actor... Of course, they'll be out there in the media and get all sorts of backing to find that person. Um, let's see, some of these questions I'm not sure about. Are coincidence always coincidences? That's a good one. From Aaron. Um... No. But, you know, I'm 
talking about energy, you know, I was actually I was doing a reading for a client today talking about relationships and why she's had so many that just seem to come and go. And, um, you know, she, she had a good question. Her question was, how, how, how can we reconcile this? How, how can we change, you know, I understand, we need to just change our spiritual path, we need to change this. I said, no, not always. And she's like, what do you mean? I said, sometimes we have to change where we live. Sometimes we have to change everything about what we're doing, uh, our work, the way we dress, and how we're living, you know? So sometimes we really need to change things. Um, and, you know, we have that ability to do that. And like I said before, usually people make changes and they're not big enough. You know, it's like having a job that you don't like. And yet I f see people going into the same field over and over, you know. One client who does this very often, and I, I just say, you know what, you need to change your field of what you're doing to be happy. But no, there's one more opportunity in this field, and then I have a couple more interviews coming up. It's frustrating sometimes. I try to tell them, but they won't listen. So, um, so. Somebody was asking about awakenings. How can I find a teacher guru that could help with some of my questions about awakening? I don't know. I don't know teachers or gurus, honestly. Will the aliens save us from nuclear, nuclear war? I actually think all... The aliens are in Scotland. This is one of my clients up in Scotland. Well, of course, my response was seeing an alien in a kilt would be amusing. <laughs> and, um, Aliens. Well, I did talk about aliens on one of my podcasts, and, um, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. It, it's interesting how that's a show on some of these networks. You know, they talk about aliens. It's one of the, I, I mean, I think it's one of the biggest subjects out there. You know? I mean, I know intuitively that you know, that we are not the only ones in the universe. Except for the people on the road that do not use their turn signals. That's, that's the other exception. But, anyway. So, as far as 2024 and the rest of 24, 2024, we'll have to keep I'll have to keep you kind of in the loop about that. But it doesn't look pretty to me, and it looks very, very hard um, on the world stage. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff going on in this country, a lot of protests. And I would be shocked if we didn't see any of this around August. I would be in total shock because I am, right now I'm getting such a strong impression for that month and I'm not sure why. I see a, a whole bunch of things. But then also November, December come to me as being some brutal months in politics and things going on in this country. 
Um, and that's it for now. So, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't ramble on about too many unnecessary or unimportant things. I really didn't want to get too into the whole politics thing right now, but I can tell you that we, we've got an organized crime ring in politics, so anything and anything will happen. Anything and everything will happen. But like I said before, when I, when I look at the people and when I, I, if I do watch the news, I, I can see right through them. And I see exactly what they're doing and, and it's, it's, it's awful. It is really awful. We have more important things to do. We have people in hospitals dying of cancer, young people, you know. And, and yet they want to put up these, uh, these charades and these uh, stupid stuff. Anyway, it's all stupid. As far as things to look forward to, I do see a lot of good happening um, for people in general. But we've been in a real negative spiral, so the best thing you can do if you have somebody who you really care about next to you, embrace them. Embrace love this year. That's very important. If you don't have one, go find one. Anyway, this is Todd Siegel, Psychic Detective. And if you would like a reading from me, it's really easy. Just go to my website, Todd Siegel Psychic. Dot com, go to appointments, and get a reading. It's very simple. Anyway, it's been an interesting talk, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.